Good evening. Oops. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, tonight we are welcoming Manuel Goutron to our first ever lecture at DIA, an event obviously long overdue. Manuel belongs to a generation of European architects that include Bjarke Ingels in Copenhagen, who will lecture tomorrow, Snow Hetto in Oslo, and Jürgen Meyer in Berlin, just to name a few, that have emerged from the shadows of greats such as Zaha, Ram, and Nouvelle. Unlike their predecessors, the focus of their careers from the very beginning has been on getting things built. They wholeheartedly embrace the métier of architecture as a relevant form of building practice. Since Manuel Goutron opened her Paris office in 1991, she has amassed a catalogue of built projects that is nothing short of astonishing. It includes every architectural task imaginable, ranging from enormous office towers to contemporary art museums, from car showrooms to motorway toll booths and from housing estates to theatres. She has even designed what she calls collective housing for goldfish, two very high stacks of goldfish bowls placed in a pond, my personal favourite. Not only are most of Manuel's projects situated in France, it is her approach to design that seems quintessentially French. To me, she is a couturier of architecture. Instead of relying on signature style, Manuel tailors unique and perfectly suited solutions for each design challenge. This can be a coat of astonishing lacework for a tower in La Défense, a ruffle of sparkling chrome swirls on an office building in Lyon, or a subtle ornamental camise for a housing estate in boulogne billancourt In her hands, marble turns into wafer-thin origami, glass into sparkling crystal, and concrete into delicate tracery that Viollet le Duc would approve of. Most importantly, Manuel Goutron knows how to construct a thing of beauty, an unexpected surplus of delight and meaning. When she took me to see her now iconic showroom for Citroën on the Champs-Élysées, nothing could have prepared me for the delicate pleasures that this elegant building provides. The ethereal colored light that bounces off the polished walls the subtle historical references embedded in the geometry of the skin. It was like slipping into a perfectly tailored suit. It lifts your spirits, you feel somehow elevated. Manuel Goutron says that she develops her projects without preconceived ideas, that she sometimes works with the context and sometimes against it. But, sh but she always aims to give her work an emotional punch and an element of surprise. Please join me in welcoming the first lady of French architecture, Manuel Goutron. Thank you very much for this presentation. Um, I'm very happy to do a lecture here, and I hope to, um, uh, that I will have some questions after. I will present something like six or seven projects. Uh, some of them will be built or are, are built at the moment. Some of them will never been built, uh, but I would like to present them to you because it was uh, an important step for, for the office. Um, actually, we are something like uh, 20, between 20 and 30 architects, and uh, we are doing a lot of competitions always. I try not to be specialized, so I have a lot of pleasure to uh, each time to discover a new type of program, uh, a new type of site or of country. Uh, so you will see, as uh, Olivier was uh, speaking about that, uh, that I'm trying each time to, to reinvent something, uh, to renew uh, architecture and uh, all the questions connected to the program and the context. Uh, so you will see some of the projects will be uh, sometimes very different from each other. Um, so build projects, unbuilt, under construction, and studies in progress. I just want to uh, show very old projects uh, this one is uh, an industrial one. Uh, it's uh, a warehouse uh, connected to the airport uh, located in Nantes, in the west part of France. And it was uh, a building which was uh, totally in plastic. All the facades and all the roof. Uh, it was uh, a, plast a totally plastic building connected to uh, the flexibility that I wanted to, um, to have inside the building. Uh, in the same time, I wanted to have a lot of flexibility and always 
a generous natural light inside each part of, of the building. That is a building which is, yes, something like now uh, 12 years old. Another one, it's uh, the Toolbus. Um, you have speak about them a few minutes ago. Uh, it's also a very old project. The idea was uh, to create um, colored glass, like in the cathedral, connected to a lot of traditions that you can find in the north part of France. The idea was also to reinterpret uh, some beautiful landscapes that you have uh, close to the motorway. And uh, in a way, you are always on the motorway without having a look uh, on the landscape. So I wanted to reintroduce them each time when you were passing through uh, the toll booths. That is my first cultural project. It was a, a theater. Um, you can see an old facade which was uh, refurbished. We had absolutely to keep it. And uh, connected to it, it was a sort of purple bubble, um, which was very radical and uh, very violent in a way. Uh, it's in the north part of the France too, um, in a sort of poor city. The budget was very low, and I wanted, even if I had no money to do it, uh, to do something which is powerful and a little bit, uh, I mean, arc iconic for, for the town. And now I'm doing an extended part uh, for this theater. That was a warehouse um, with uh, a sort of work um, connected to the folds. I'm working sometimes with uh, folding glass, folding uh, steel panels, and so on. And the idea he here was to fold the metallic panels to introduce the natural light uh, everywhere in, in this huge building, which was something like 20,000 square meters. Uh, now I will go through um, two built projects. Uh, one is a showroom dedicated to Citroën. Uh, I will perhaps go through quickly because you know it. Uh, it's um, in the south part of the Champs-Élysées, not far away from uh, La Concorde and the Grand Palais. Um, I was very happy when I've done this competition because the client didn't have a very strict program. Uh, he had only the wish to give us uh, f a lot of freedom. He wanted simply to have architecture with a great A. And um, he was confident with uh, the works of four or five uh, competitors in, which in, in whom I was. Um, the, the plot is very small, and uh, I decided to have only two ideas to be uh, also in a way very powerful, so not to... Uh, I mean, not to have too much ideas, but to, to be very efficient. So the volume of the project is speaking about the brand, and uh, the interior is speaking about the project, which is the cars. Uh, the volume, it, it means that I have worked on a sort of facade, uh, which is deeply connected to the shape of a car. In a sp smooth way, uh, I have connected the, the facade, the roof, and the way of the building in a sort of molded shape. And with this shape, I decided only to, to speak about uh, the logo, so to emphasize and to play with the logo of the brand, uh, which is a sort of double chevron you can see uh, on the top of, of, of the picture. And uh, the second idea that I was uh, speaking about was the interior of the building which is deeply dedicated to the project, uh, which is a car. Um, you have some plans here. The plot is only 300 square meters. And um, you can see here the shape of, of the building, which is a sort of molded form. You can see how much steel we have inside. Uh, but I wanted not to do a sort of technological building. In a way, I didn't want that the people see the, the steel, uh, the beams, the structure, and so on. I wanted to mask it in a sort of uh, completely comfortable and smooth atmosphere, uh, this type of atmosphere that you can have when you drive a Citroën. So I wanted to come back to a, um, an atmosphere that you can have in the car directly. Uh, so the facade is working with uh, the chevron. Uh, we had to keep uh, on the, I mean, connected to the pavement, 
the rectangular facade that we had uh, in the past, in the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, it was a very beautiful facade made by André Citroën, a sort of Mondrian uh, connection of rectangular uh, glass panels. And after that, I have um, put the original chevron, and after that, more you are going up, more I was, I mean, I decided to play with the chevron, uh, to appropriate myself the chevron, and to speak about the ground in a more inventive way. Uh, so, uh, more you are going up, more the facade is coming from rectangular shapes to triangular shapes, which are uh, translating the chevron, and uh, more you are going up, also more you are going from a flat facade to a sculptural one, uh, which is like a, an origami. There is, I think, a play, a game in Japan. Um, this game is that you have to express uh, a feeling or a sink with an origami. And I wanted with uh, this facade, with this um, volume, to express deeply the brand of, of Citroën. Um, after that, I would like just to speak about the interior. Um, we decided, because the space is very small, uh, to dedicate the space mainly to the cars, to the cars before to the people. Because I wanted that the people are always, I mean, connected to a car, um, that in fact it's a, it's a place where uh, which is given to the cars in the way that it's a monumental way to show them. And uh, I mean, the car is a king of, of this place. The idea was to create a sort of huge display case, like a tree of car. So you have a red uh, mast um, on which uh, they are attached. Uh, I mean, the platform are attached. And uh, you have uh, eight circular platforms which are uh, connected to this mast. Um, this culture is really in the middle of the space and the people are always going around. Uh, so they have always a link with uh, the car. And the idea was um, in a way to double the number of cars. So when you are going down, uh, you see the cars, but when you are going up, you always uh, see the reflects of the car. And um, the idea was to translate the car in the more poetic way. So you cannot have a, a realistic view on the car, but a sort of artistic view uh, because of those uh, mirror sailings. So you can, uh, you can match uh, pieces of, of, of the cars only. There are two colors in the building, red and white which uh, are the two colors of, of the brand. Uh, so you can have some views. All the structure is totally masked. Uh, I wanted to create a, a space which is totally white in a pearly um, white atmosphere. And the two red touches are um, the chevron in the facade and also this uh, sculpture which is uh, in the middle of the building. And uh, you have a sort of feeling of being in a huge void because uh, you don't have so much uh, square meters which are built, uh, only something like 1,000 square meters, even if you go up on something like 30 meters. So each floor is only 200 uh, square meters, it's very small, and it's only made with stairs, passerelles. And you have this feeling when you are visiting the, the place um, to be in, in a sort of huge breathing space, a, a huge atrium, uh, without having too much place to, to, to stand up. You have always to be in movement uh, to go around the cars. Uh, that is uh, some parts of the facade. Uh, it was forbidden to, to get the red from outside, so we have worked the glass with a lot of filters. Uh, all the filters were connected to um, um, to the sun um, insulation, so I wanted to, to give inside a smooth atmosphere, not too bright, and uh, most part of the time uh, the, the glass is uh, translucent and not transparent. 
Uh, that is another building which is um, finished at the moment. It's uh, an ex a refurbishment and extended part for a um, modern art museum which is located in Lille, in the north part of France. Um, it's uh, special because the building was uh, built, uh, the original building was uh, built uh, by Roland Simonet, which is, uh, who is um, a very well-known French architect. Uh, he has built this uh, museum um, in uh, 1983. And uh, since something like uh, five, ten years, uh, the museum is uh, listed. It means that the monumental authorities has really a power on, uh, on the new architecture. And um, it was one of my goal to, to, I mean, to take care about the monumental authorities because they have a great power in France. Uh, during the competition, uh, the goal for the monumental authorities and uh, all the people connected to, uh, to the competition, uh, everybody wanted to create an extended part of the museum, um, which was really um, separated, uh, not connected with uh, the existing building. It was, in a way, forbidden to touch uh, the existing building, except only to refurbish it in a very respectful way. And um, in fact, I, I, I mean, I found that this idea was really a stupid one because uh, when you analyze the architecture of Roland Simonet, um, it was a very modest architect, uh, strongly connected to the landscape, to the context, and um, st strongly, con um, I mean, connected to, uh, to the other architectures uh, when he was uh, building in, uh, in cities, for example. Uh, so I decided not to respect this, um, this uh, regulation, I mean this goal, and I decided uh, completely in an opposite way to touch the existing museum, to embrace it, um, and to envelop two of uh, the four facades with my own project. I wanted really to respect uh, the scale of the original museum, you will see it after. Um, I wanted to, to work in a way with the same type of voc vocabulary that uh, than, um, uh, Roland Simone has used, but with my own sensitivity and uh, my own personality. So I respected uh, the great, uh, I mean, scale and ideas from Simone, but after that, uh, I decided to, to have my own freedom. And uh, the most important thing is that I decided um, to, um, to stick my architecture really against, close to, close to him. So my project was um, um, developing, is developing now this shape. It's a sort of double fan-shaped uh, volume. One is um, dedicated for the Art Brut collections and the other on the north part is dedicated to circulations, connection between uh, old and new project and also is dedicated to a restaurant. And uh, that is a model which was uh, exhibited to uh, the Biennale in uh, Venice. Uh, it was a way to show how much I wanted to, um, uh, to connect myself to Roland Simonet, but in, in the other hand, I wanted to keep my own freedom. Um, I have some pictures more. So you will see at the end, I think there is a sort of respect between the two architectures. Uh, and with this project, I won the competition at the end uh, because everybody thought it was um, in a way respectful with uh, Roland Simonet architecture. Uh, that is um, a picture which was uh, made for the phase uh, permit and now it's uh, the real picture. I, I will show some pictures uh, during the phase under construction. Um, in terms of um, functionalities, uh, the museum is really interesting because there are three types of collections. Uh, collection dedicated to uh, contemporary art, to modern art, and also to art brut. And the idea of, um, of um, the head uh, responsible of, of the museum is to create a sort of 
connection between those two types of art uh, and uh, to, um, to give to the public a lot of questions about the role and uh, the goals of Art Brut. So uh, also it is for this reason that I have strongly and deeply connected uh, the different spaces between uh, contemporary art, modern art and Art Brut. And my shapes were um, designed in a much more organic way uh, because the artwork is sometimes very special. Uh, the collection of artwork in this museum is um, a very well-known one. And uh, some pieces of this art are very uh, delicate, but some others are very violent in a way. Uh, so I wanted to create a sort of smooth environment and the goal, you will see it after, was uh, to create five rooms. Uh, each of them was dedicated to a sort of special topic. And at the end of um, each type of rooms, there is a sort of breathing space where you are disconnect disconnected from the art pieces and you are connected to the landscape. So it's a sort of calm and intermediate space when you can rethink about the art that you have um, seen previously and you can be more prepared to, to the other types of art. Um, the, the facades are made with uh, different types of concrete, uh, prefabricated concrete when you, f you have voids and um, simple concrete with only uh, a sort of lace of uh, graphic lace which is designed on, on, the, on the facades. The idea was to mask a little bit the locations of the windows um, in a sort of uh, continuous texture on, on the concrete. And um, the idea was also to create a sort of moucharabier uh, because uh, the arbrut is very um, delicate and fragile and we had to protect it from uh, the natural light. So you will see after, the interior of the exhibition spaces is very, is, is a little bit dark in a way to protect uh, all, the, um, all the art pieces. So you can see an extremity of, um, uh, of, uh, of uh, fold. Um, there are five folded um, pieces of concrete connected to five rooms. And here you can see a sort of breathing space which is very narrow, very small. Uh, but when you are in this space, you are really connected to the landscape. Uh, the location of the museum is beautiful. It's uh, in, a, in a generous uh, greenery space in the north part of Lille. So here you can see uh, the beginning of the five fingers going through the landscape. And uh, in the middle of the picture, you can see a sort of uh, um, introduction place where uh, all the five uh, topics of Art Brut are explained before you are beginning uh, the promenade. Uh, the building is, uh, I mean, the phase under construction is finished si since um, three or four months now, and the museum will be opened in only uh, one year because they are thinking about now the way to um, to fix uh, the art pieces and to organize them in the, in the space. Here you can see also another picture of the connection between the five fingers. And the idea was really after, I mean, at the extremity of each finger to, to create this uh, breathing space that you can discover a little bit. That's some pictures during the phase under construction. Uh, there is a finger which is more high, it's a double, um, double floors uh, finger, I mean the finger is coming on the other, the, the fold is going up, uh, to accompany very high sculptures uh, from the arbrut. That is a little patio, which is another breathing space. The, really the museum is working always on the connection between um, uh, artistic uh, places and bracing spaces, uh, always with the idea of uh, create a, a transition between each, each type of, uh, of topic. 
and that is uh, the facade on the restaurant part, uh, which is uh, connected to the big patio from uh, Roland Simonet, and that is uh, the last view, I think. Um, so you can see the way to connect the two architectures to respect the same uh, type of scale and to, to respect also uh, key idea of Roland Simonet, which was to be always very uh, strongly connected to, to the landscape, to be uh, close to the, to the ground floor. Uh, about the unbuilt project, uh, I would like to uh, speak a little bit about the Tourfa, uh, which was a competition two, or s two, two and a half uh, years ago. Uh, the winner was Morphosis Tom Main. Um, on my, s my side, um, I have made a project which I would like to explain a little bit. Um, it's a skyscraper which will be something like uh, 300 meters high. So it's very, I mean, it's really a skyscraper, it's not a tower, it's really a tall building. And um, my first goal was to uh, disconnect my project from, uh, uh, I mean, the projects that you can see now all over the world with a lot of glass facades um, in a sort of international architecture. I wanted really to, to speak about the structure in, in my tower because I think that a tower is, is really um, an incredib in incredible type of buildings uh, connected to, to, the, to the structure. And uh, I wanted to show the structure a lot. Uh, so the idea was to, to put partly the structure outside the building to create a sort of a uh, skeleton, an exoskeleton, uh, which was something like 60% uh, of the structure. So 40 was in the core, uh, where you can find uh, the lift and so on, and 60% was uh, this type of skin. Uh, a sort of inspiration was a natural sponge, uh, which is called a plectella. It's a sponge which is uh, living in the seas, and um, it's a very strong sponge and um, it was an inspiration for me because uh, I wanted to to exactly uh, show the structure in a sort of powerful and violent way but in the same time with a lot of poetry. Uh, I wanted that the people who will come uh, close to the tower uh, will be completely um, I mean uh, impressed by uh, the 300 meters of the outside structure, but I wanted also that they will be, I mean, pressed in a, in a poetic way. Um, I wanted for this uh, structure to have a sort of graphic design, um, which was um, completely adapted to each type of facade. When I was in the south, I was uh, very, I mean, opaque, and more I was going to the north facade, more I was transparent uh, to let the natural light coming inside. And also uh, the design of, uh, I mean, the structure where uh, growing up, more you were going, more you were going down, more the circular shapes uh, were uh, going bigger and bigger to create at the end, on this uh, picture you can see it, huge, absolutely huge doors and you could go uh, through the doors and you could be exactly under the tower, which was also a sort of emotion. Um, the floors were very simple uh, because at this scale, a tower has to be uh, very efficient. Uh, also, the, the goal which was to, to put partly the structure outside was really uh, a deep sustainable goal uh, because in this case, it was a way to minimize the heaviness of the structure. And uh, the shape of the platforms were triangular to be uh, uh, very compact, uh, so to minimize uh, the um, linear meters on, on facades. Uh, that is uh, another model beginning to show in detail the way for, for, the, stru for the, um, the structure to envelop the tower. It's like a dress, so you can compare it to address because you have the body of the tower which is a very simple and flexible glass facade and in front of it 
you have this lace of metal um, which has a lot of freedom um, to, to create a sort of frame in front of uh, the windows of each uh, offices. My goal was to create also a tower which has a sort of double scale. Uh, there is a scale when you are looking on the tower from very far away, you have to see something which has to be very iconic. But when you are close to the tower and when you are inside, you have to have something which is more in a human scale. So you can see the way for uh, the, um, I mean the skin, the double skin to interlace, to interlace uh, itself and to create a sort of, uh, yes, I wanted to create something which is never existing for the moment. Uh, that is uh, a detail of, of the floor. You have, um, y there, are, there were some gardens uh, inside the tower to create intermediate climates uh, sometimes in the floor uh, because uh, there were so many square meters, something like 140,000 square meters. So each five levels you had uh, gardens to, I mean, to be a little bit outside. That is a section. Uh, that is uh, the view uh, in a way from uh, inside um, an office. I wanted also that uh, when the people will, um, will change uh, the location inside the tower, I wanted that each time their office uh, will be in a way different. They will have a different frame uh, presenting to, to the users uh, the, the landscape. And it was also uh, the idea of creating a sort of first frame uh, before uh, being uh, totally projected into, uh, I mean, the surroundings and uh, the town of Paris, which was one or two uh, kilometers far away. There are some pictures here which are illustrating a sort of inspiration that I had, uh, connecting the tower to the Tour Eiffel, uh, because what I like a lot in the Tour Eiffel, it's the fact that you can go above it and uh, you can uh, see the tower which is just suspended uh, on your face and I wanted to recreate this type of uh, emotion. So you can see the link and um, the, the characteristic of the curves were always enveloping the people in, uh, in a sort of smooth, smooth way. But the structure was totally monumental uh, because for example here the section of one of the two skins were something like uh, one meter and a half. So it was walls uh, like three meters enveloping uh, some spaces uh, on, the, um, on the ground floor of the tower. So the people were, could have the feeling to be very small connected to this scale too. Also, I wanted to work deeply with um, uh, the idea of connect deeply the tower with the surrounding. I think the, the problem with a lot of towers that they are just going up from the floor uh, without trying to, to connect and to uh, prolong and to elongate the tower in the ground floor, uh, in the basement and in the public space uh, which, uh, which, are, um, which are around. So I wanted to make in sort that really the, the tower and the double skin of the tower um, was continuing and uh, going far away from the tower to appropriate the space, uh, to create a sort of signal and to accompany the public um, where they were going inside the tower. And it was also a way to connect two or three levels uh, between the basement and two ground floors uh, to uh, the lobby of the tower, which was uh, 20 meters high. So you had different types of floors uh, going to the lobby, and each type of floor was precisely one of uh, the skin of, of the ground floors. Uh, now I would like to, to show a competition, um, another lost competition. Um, it was uh, in Oslo, in Norway. Uh, I show that because it was a very important competition last winter, and the winner was Abalos Herreros, uh, the Spanish architects. Uh, we were a lot of competitors, something like um, 20. 
Um, and uh, the great idea of the town of Oslo was to dedicate a museum especially for Munch and uh, to mix uh, this project, this program, with uh, a lot of different programs like housings, hotel, and offices. And although the great idea was to build uh, this project on the sea, close to uh, the Snoeta um, project, uh, which is here. Uh, so our piece of land was uh, something like that. Um, partly it's uh, existing piece of land, but partly it was to be built on the sea. And uh, the goal of the project was really to create a link with uh, the Snoeta Opera, to respect his architecture, uh, without, of course, trying to create uh, a building which is similar, but there was really a link to create. And I think uh, my mistake was that I have made a project with, um, I mean, a link which was too much in opposition with Snoeta. I wanted to search something which is complementary, but I think I was too much complementary. You will see in the, um, in the next pictures. Um, I was, uh, I mean, very inspired by the landscape in Norway. The way that uh, the landscapes are sculpted, uh, they are very uh, strong. Uh, the weather is sometimes very cold, um, very warm. The light is sometimes very dark. So it's, um, it's a climate and a country full of oppositions itself. Um, I was also inspired by the colors which had inspired Edward Munch. So it was important for me to uh, understand very deeply the paintings of Munch, but it was also very important to uh, understand the landscape um, which had uh, inspired him and um, I mean the culture which has uh, inspired him. This type of landscapes, for example, are very important lands landscape for him. And uh, for example, when, when he has painted that, uh, it was really connected to uh, the previous pictures that I, am, that I have shown to you. Uh, so I was really uh, both inspired by the paintings and by the landscape that you can find in Norway. Um, I was, of course, also inspired by uh, Snoeta um, uh, building, but only to, to, um, to give the same type of generosity that I will explain after. But I didn't want to, uh, for example, to keep these uh, uh, smooth slopes, these uh, pearly white colors, because I wanted really to uh, express with my project uh, the paintings of Munch. Um, it's rare when you are doing a competition for a museum that you can uh, do a museum especially for a, pen a painter, an artist. Uh, normally it's uh, for several painters, uh, several artists. Um, I, tr I was really uh, impressed by the fact that you m the museum was completely and totally dedicated to him. So um, I wanted that really uh, the building at the hand expresses in a way um, the, the paintings of Munch. Uh, I have made a sculpture that you can see on, on this uh, previous uh, 3D views. Um, I wanted to create in a way this dialogue between Snoeta and my project. Uh, Snoeta had a really simple and um, I mean angular, uh, triangular slopes. I wanted also to work with slopes, uh, but uh, curved slopes, more connected to the paintings of, of Munch. Um, and I wanted to keep the same scale and um, to be connected to the fjords and to sc the sculptures uh, of the mountains in, uh, in Norway. I will speak about uh, the program after. Uh, but um, in this project, I wanted to mix deeply uh, the Museum of Munch and also all the housings and uh, offices and commercial activities in a unique and iconic architecture uh, floating on the sea. And uh, here you can see how the color appears in, in my project. 
so you can see that more the pro project will um, uh, will go through the pictures, more the color will be uh, important because I wanted to uh, to express uh, the bright colors of the Norway and the landscapes. So after there was um, um, a precise work uh, on how to to cut uh, the different floors and uh, the idea was really to play with uh, those curves um, to make it so that partly the curves are uh, pedestrian walks like for the Snoeta Opera. I wanted also to give partly, you will see after, the curves uh, to very uh, monumental and visible spaces inside and um, also I wanted to dedicate the peaks uh, of the mountains also to a special uh, parts of the program. So you can see in those sections, uh, the beginning of the sculpture inside, the way to create huge atriums, um, you, the way to dedicate uh, the roofs to particular places, for example, that is the middle of the museum. Um, each type of was dedicated to a, to a special place inside. Uh, and there was a mixity between uh, very small windows and very huge windows. Uh, you, wa you, you were here in the, the part dedicated to the museum. So sometimes you had um, places dedicated to the paintings and connected to that huge windows, uh, giving you the possibility to see outside the landscape and the Snowita project and the sea. That is uh, the beginning of, uh, I mean, the, um, the contextual work. So the, um, the mu museum and the other type of programs are displayed here. And in this part, it was only uh, exterior places. Um, it was a sort of conscious sometimes where you can rest um, in, a, in a very good orientation for, for the sun. You were always in the south, uh, facing the sun and the sea. Uh, so it was a sort of a warming space uh, where you can rest, you can uh, do sport, and you had uh, some restaurants. Uh, that is uh, the beginning of the interior spaces, uh, dedicate f dedicated, for example, to the lobby, I mean, to the entrance of the, the museum. You can see the section here. Uh, so the entrance which was uh, really underneath the curves and you had a sort of uh, uh, grid, a very simple grid, rectangular one, square one, um, which was uh, creating regular beams to, to support uh, the sculpture and the peaks. And uh, you can see the deep mixity. Here you have, um, I mean, if it's a ground floor, you had uh, some facilities. Uh, offices and shops. Uh, the museum was here and here you had the beginning of an hotel. Uh, so everything was really uh, connected, directly connected in the, in the project. And I was working like in a mountain. So you had uh, the possibility to have Belvedere, for example, for the housings. Uh, always you had balconies facing the south um, to, to, I mean, to accompany the sun into the, um, the housings. That is uh, one of the last views. And uh, the other one where our project was uh, facing uh, the Snoeta one. And um, I tried to create a sort of complementary sculpture. Mine was more dark, connected to Munch, than Snoeta, uh, which was very uh, white and clear. And also with uh, the curves, uh, I wanted to, to search this uh, necessary uh, complementary with uh, Snoeta. Uh, the studies in progress, um, it's uh, about Copenhagen. I think, um, I mean, it's difficult at the moment in Copenhagen, and um, I think I will not do this project um, because the developer has, uh, has done a sort of bank route. But we have begun the phase under construction six months ago, and uh, I mean, this project was important for the office because we have worked on it uh, during three years. Uh, you will see after, it's, um, 
location which was uh, very interesting in the center of Copenhagen. Uh, it was a plot which was uh, going through, uh, connecting two very important streets, uh, Frederiksbergade in um, this side, and the other was a, a less important street. But the interest of the project was to mix, um, I mean, the contemporary architecture with a lot of old buildings that we had uh, to keep. Uh, that is uh, the first model that I have made in the, in the office. It's a very simple one. Uh, the explanation will come after. Uh, perhaps I didn't put the, um, I mean, the drawings in the good, um, in the good way. That is uh, the most important picture. It's uh, the model. Um, we had a plot uh, which was something like this one. Uh, we had the possibility to demolish this building, but we had absolutely to keep this one. And uh, the idea here was to create a very, uh, I mean, contemporary architecture, even if we have uh, old and beautiful building connected to us. Uh, the idea was to work because um, the plot is small, uh, the courtyard is very dark and narrow, so I wanted the first idea was to work with a lot of glass and to fold the glass to have the maximum of linear of natural light. And uh, the folded glass was also here to express the narrowness of, of the plot. Um, it's like if uh, um, the two buildings which are on both sides are really uh, pushing me. And uh, in this case, my facade was doing a sort of accordion, a sort of really very, um, uh, very deep fold. And after that more, uh, I was going inside um, and deeply into the plot, more the folds were going in a sort of fan-shaped um, to adapt progressively uh, their slope with uh, the existing roofs. This building was a very beautiful one, and we had progressively to, uh, to adapt our folds uh, to, the, um, to the existing um, roofs. One more time, I was very inspired by the, the light, the natural light that you can find in the North countries. And um, as I said previously, the, the courtyard was very narrow, so we have made a sort of canyon uh, displaying uh, terraces one upon the other to go down in sort of progressive way uh, to the very small courtyard which was uh, really uh, in, in this dark place. But um, the way to create the canyon was to get more natural light and all the building was really made with uh, uh, glass panels. And um, the glass panels were, were um, uh, integrating a lot of type of different filters, uh, always in uh, pearly gold colors uh, to be uh, at the hand in a sort of uh, uh, warm color atmosphere. And you can see the view uh, from the night uh, connecting uh, the roof with the uh, existing one and creating a sort of very uh, I mean, light space uh, during the night with a lot of artificial uh, light, colored artificial light. That is uh, the sort of uh, front shape um, displayed on, on the front facade. The entrance was uh, exactly here. And uh, some views uh, which are explaining about, uh, about the falls and the terraces. Each terrace was sort of special place dedicated to the shops or to the hotel. And that's uh, the work uh, that we have made for, for the colors, for uh, the way to, uh, to do the repetition between the different type of uh, colored filters. Uh, this um, building is a, is a tower. Uh, that I will uh, do, I hope, in, uh, in La Défense. It's a um, competition that I have won uh, two years ago. Uh, the site was very, 
violent and uh, difficult because uh, it's a long site, uh, something like 200 uh, meters, and um, there is a sort of uh, roadway passing through the site um, in, uh, in a sort of bridge, so with a lot of very poor places underneath the bridge. Uh, the plot is uh, something like 200 uh, meters in a linear way, so uh, with the roadway here and with um, a train uh, passing this direction. So I it was difficult to, to think about a tower, and I wanted not only to build a tower, but also to create my own context. Uh, so to improve the site and to erase, in a way, uh, the presence of the roadway. So you have some uh, pictures uh, of the first model. Uh, the idea was to create a tower uh, from um, of uh, 140 meters high, but also to create a building which is quite more important, um, which is this building going underneath uh, the motorway, underneath the roadway, which is 200 meters long. And um, the building uh, gives uh, in this part, the impress um, to be, I mean, um, um, violently um, connected to the motorway. It's uh, like if the motorway were coming after and uh, push uh, the building. Uh, and the conception of the project is, uh, in a way, uh, sought in aggressive, um, with aggressive feelings, because I wanted to to erase the motorway, I wanted to change uh, completely the shape of, uh, of the district. Um, and uh, that was a possibility also uh, in this place to create a sort of huge square. Um, the people were coming this way, the entrance is here. And uh, you have this monumental, um, it's like uh, in a bird, the wing of, of the two wings of a bird. Um, so you are suddenly going underneath uh, the wing, one of the wings uh, of the bird, in a sort of protective uh, atmosphere, uh, finding the entrance in this part. Um, and you will see after the way to, um, to envelop this, um, uh, this square. Um, there is also a sort of graphic design uh, which is accompanying uh, the movement of the tower and the way to connect the horizontal building with uh, the vertical one. And uh, at the end, it's a sort of filter, one more time, which is not a structural one like in, uh, la uh, like in the first tower that I have shown previously. Here, the filter is only to, um, to protect from too much sun uh, in, the, in the south and west facade. Uh, there is no uh, structural goal because uh, the tower is not as tall as uh, the first one. Uh, you can see here uh, the, the way to, um, uh, to create a sort of ceiling, uh, which will be the place of numeric art, and uh, there will be a sort of strong impress when you will come in, in, the, in the tower. So you will have to, to go through a gallery underneath the roadway, and only after you will find the lobby of the tower. That is another view. Uh, I wanted also to, to mask uh, the visibility uh, of, the, of the train, so I wanted really to create those two uh, triangular shapes uh, to create a sort of strong, um, I mean, position, a strong um, location and a strong modification of the landscape. That is uh, the way to show how much the, the tower is also a long project because 200 uh, meters long, it's, uh, it's a way to, to uh, accompany a whole uh, street. That is subdues on the, on the gallery uh, when you will have to go through uh, to access to the lobby, which is here. Uh, that is another project which is uh, in Cairo. We, are, uh, we have done uh, partly the studies at, at the moment and waiting for the permit. Um, Cairo is a very special uh, town uh, because there is a lot of pollution. And uh, it's, it's really sad because uh, when the people have the possibility, 
uh, they avoid to live in the town and uh, they always want to, to live outside. So there are some districts uh, which are uh, growing, which are appearing in, in, the, in the desert. Uh, it's something like uh, three, um, I mean 30 uh, kilometers from the center of Cairo. And it's a pity because um, the people are now living in the districts which are outside the city and inside the city. Um, I mean, the, the housings are more and more poor uh, without refurbishment. It's like if, if now everybody is living outside. Um, also, the problem is of this district, uh, the fact that, uh, uh, I mean, it's completely new, uh, made with very classical master plans and the housings are totally um, like Versailles without interest, without architectural interest. And the pity is also that uh, you don't have any facilities. It's only housings growing up in the middle of the desert. And about the climate, uh, you don't have any pollution here. Uh, you don't have the same pollution that you can have in, inside Cairo city. Uh, but the difficulty is that you are in a way very close to the beginning of the desert and there is a lot of wind, uh, so a lot of sand. And, um, and uh, it's, it's very, I mean, you have a feeling to, to be in a wood place when you are here. You are not protected inside the city. You are really against all the winds with all the sands. Uh, so the plot is here. You can see uh, the beginning of the housing district. Uh, my client is a private one, um, which is a distributor of uh, several car brands. And uh, his first goal was to create a sort of uh, multi-brand showroom. And more we were uh, discussing and working on the project, more he, mm, he accepted the idea of mix this first program, which is a showroom, uh, with other programs to give more facilities to the users. And uh, now the, the idea is to create a sort of building dedicated to um, um, cars, of course, but also restaurants, shops, um, cinemas, and, uh, and some cafe. Um, in fact, I have begun the project really with the interior spaces. As you can see here, the exterior has to be uh, very, I mean, uh, simple. Uh, without asperities, uh, without um, complex volumes, connected to this question of, of the sand and of, of the wind and of the pollution, in a way. So I wanted to have very flat facades and uh, to give all the richness inside. I began the project with um, the functionality of a platform for cars. Like in a showroom, you always have circular platforms. Uh, which are turning and on which you put a car. I began the project with a circular platform and I began that in uh, doing a sort of grid of circular platform. So you have 30 circular platforms on the floor and um, after that I, I have worked in, in 3D like you can see here. So the circular platform are the intersection between uh, cylinders which are connecting themselves in a perpendicular way. So it's a sort of three-dimensional space uh, where all the cylinders are going through uh, the other and create this impress of having spheric places. Um, it's a very complex space, but the interest of that was uh, to make in sort that there is no more partition. There is no need of partitions between uh, the different type of brands. Um, the partition is naturally made with the sculpture itself of the space. We have made a lot of voids. There is a lot of atrium. And in this uh, work uh, made of uh, intersections between circular um, cylinders, uh, you have the big uh, open spaces, which are, I mean, th you are looking on them, but the intersection are doing also very little spaces, uh, which are dedicated to VIP places, to sale uh, places, to um, uh, lounge, uh, 
uh, I mean places where you can find uh, intimacy that you cannot find uh, in the very open uh, other spaces. Uh, that is uh, the modularity of, of the project which is explained here. Uh, some drawings explain uh, the way to cut now this sculpture and on one floor you can find a big uh, place here. I mean it's something like 12 square meters, it's not so big. Uh, the entrance of this space which is uh, smaller and uh, the other floors uh, which have no uh, intimate spaces. So it's a sort of uh, uh, different type of layers that you can find in the project. Uh, that is a model that we, we had the necessity to do a lot of models because the space is very difficult to understand. Uh, so you can see the circular platforms uh, on each type of floor. In fact, you have two types of floors, uh, which is this one and this one. And you can see on the model um, the, the way to, to display uh, the little lounge uh, places. So you had to go a little bit downstairs. And, uh, and the, the place is beautiful because it's like a tent. There is a connection also with uh, the Arabic architecture. That is a roof terrace which is uh, on the top. It was very important to do exterior spaces connected to the, to the climate. Uh, that is some uh, 3D views. You can see uh, the intimate space which are always uh, connected themselves with uh, perspectives and uh, the central atrium in the middle. And that is uh, the detail of, uh, of the VIP pl place. Uh, also with a sort of contrast between uh, um, the open space which is completely uh, made in concrete, simple concrete, and inside it was lined with uh, ceramics and uh, mosaics. Uh, under construction there is uh, this project uh, which is uh, an office building uh, in the middle place in France, the town is called Saint-Étienne. Um, it's a project which was very difficult in the beginning because it's an office building of uh, 30,000 square meters and the goal of the, of the client was to uh, dedicate this building to 10, 10 tenants, 10 users. Um, it was a public uh, administrations. But the difficulty was that uh, the tenants didn't knew uh, when, the when we had to begin the project how much uh, square meters they will need. Uh, so we had uh, the difficulty to think about a project which is a sort of continuous volume uh, to accompany the, the tenants and the different type of users in, in their way to appropriate themselves the building. In the beginning, for example, one type of administration wanted to have 3,000 square meters. Uh, it's uh, the town hall of Saint-Étienne. Now they wanted to have appro approximately 8,000 uh, square meters. So it was absolutely necessary to create a sort of continuous volume. Um, and uh, we didn't have the possibility to do a tower because it was too expensive in this type of town. So the idea was to create this type of volume. It's a sort of, uh, of, uh, of um, anneau, uh, a ring. And uh, after that, we, we decided to, to fold the ring uh, around the plot, which was very around the site, uh, which was very small. And uh, the necessity of uh, folding um, this, uh, this shape was also to, to give a lot of transparencies through uh, the site uh, because the mayor wanted to keep pedestrian walks and, um, and perspectives uh, so that the people can manage to go through uh, the entire building. That is uh, the way to, to think about this continuity. So each type of user uh, for example, this one uh, can move and have a bigger place, and this one can also move and have a bigger place. So it was a huge uh, puzzle between the tenants, but there were no impossibility. Everything was possible. It was only a way to dispatch themselves. 
uh, along the, the wing. <coughs> we have made several build, uh, models and that was uh, the final one, uh, connecting in fact uh, all the interior uh, spaces uh, through three doors. Uh, here it's a huge cantilever creating the main, uh, the major door, and here you have two other doors uh, precisely connecting other streets and the public spaces which are around uh, the, 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 the site. Um, in fact, you cannot see that immediately in the pictures, but uh, uh, the building is very dense. There is a lot of square meters compared to the capacity of the site. Uh, it means that uh, the street which is uh, in the middle between the two range, between the two uh, buildings, it's, it's a space which is narrow, only eight meters. And uh, the dimension here, it's uh, something like 30 meters. So it was a sort of very n narrow and long street in, in the middle of, of, of the building, like a courtyard. And um, progressively, the idea was to create a sort of very bright uh, street and to use a bright color to, uh, to give a sort of artificial sun in the middle of the courtyard. So you can see uh, the courtyard which is here. And the way to accompany it with uh, this uh, bright yellow, uh, which is emphasizing the natural light, which is creating a sort of warm, very warm place in the middle. And uh, the buildings are sometimes uh, very thin so that you can see through them uh, the transparency and the, the, the yellow wall which is uh, uh, behind. And there was a, a sort of work. Uh, it means that each time when the volume were going up, the first one, uh, the volume which was behind was going down. So uh, it was a way to, 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 to create more views uh, without uh, the vi visi visibility on the other building. Uh, that's uh, the way to, to work on this wing and to display uh, two types of facade. Uh, the curtain wall, curtain wall facade and the yellow facade, uh, always in a very uh, continuous uh, promenade. That is the ground floor and the three doors. Uh, that is a, a level, a common level. You have a lot of square um, staircases, uh, and it was um, very good for the functionalities because you had uh, those ten tenants, which is a, a high number of different type of users in the building. That is uh, the elevation inside the courtyard and uh, some pictures. Uh, now the phase under construction will be finished in four months. Uh, so you can see uh, the cantilever and um, the steel structure which was uh, very Im impressive. And um, here the way for the volume to go around and uh, to create those huge uh, doors and always uh, to create visual connections with the sky and with another door. So um, the, the folded, uh, the folds accompany always um, visual perspectives through other streets or through uh, the sky. That is uh, another huge door which is uh, going up to the courtyard and uh, some more pictures on the phase under construction. And that is uh, the question of the reflect uh, between uh, the yellow and the gray. That's, I think, the last picture. Thank you very much, Manuel. Um, maybe there are any questions in the audience? No? In that case, I, I want to start off. Okay. <coughs> I was ver very interested in, in your office buildings because the last one you've shown, because it's a municipal authority, um, mm. it's, a, it's a very fixed program. It has e exactly the amount of square meters for yes. each each one of these mm. uh, offices mm -hmm. compared with your your towers which are com 
completely flexible. I mean, somebody could have more space or they could have less space. In the Saint Etienne one, is it possible if one of those uh, you know, offices needed more space and one needed less, can you, can you program the building so that it can e expand and contract in the different elements? Yes. In fact, we are doing just that at the moment because uh, the building will be opened in six, six months and uh, until now they are changing their mind. So it means that really we have called the project in the office a sort of Aztec snake. And uh, they are always, until the end, moving. Uh, and uh, of course the advantage is that it's uh, administrations uh, depending of different type of ministries, but it's always depending of the state. So they are arranging together themselves to, uh, to adapt. And when uh, one of them is uh, growing up, the other is pushing itself or growing up or uh, getting less spaces. But uh, everybody is having uh, very, I mean, um, constructive discussions. Uh, because uh, I think also all the spaces are uh, as good as the others. So they are always moving in a, in a space which is uh, with the same flexibility, same views, and same quality. But they are moving still at the moment, which is a little bit difficult. If I can ask one other question, which is, th this is a, a fascinating, I think, dilemma about the city where uh, your very, very distinctive, both structurally uh, and in appearance because of the kind of filigrees or the filters. You are in Saint-Étienne, in the office building? No, no, actually just generally. Yes, generally. Which is a very big contrast to the usual rather kind of, you know, dumb, modern, just glazed, mm. sub-international style. Uh, but supposing that all the buildings are like yours, would you then be doing a Mesian tower? I mean, this, your building is very distinctive, but it's distinctive because it's quite unlike all the others. Mm. I mean, maybe not Tom Main, but you know, who knows? Um, and it's just a, a question of the distinctiveness of this architecture against the kind of banality of, of most office towers. And whether, in a sense, you're dependent on them being boring, um, but what would happen if there are 50 manual Gautrons <laughs> and actually they all have a kind of lace and they all have an interesting structure? Um, th this, is, this is the problem of kind of iconic architecture. Yes, but you are, you are asking, I mean, you are speaking about a crucial question, uh, which is about the context. Uh, when, for example, I am in La Défense, uh, which is a beautiful district in a way because you have uh, towers which are from different type of periods. Uh, of course, most part of them are, I mean, out of fashion, uh, gray towers, very sad towers. And the context is this one. I am inside a district which needs uh, to find new icons, uh, to find new contemporary architecture because they didn't have any towers during 20 years. So of course, connected to this context, I wanted to do an iconic tower. But if I was in a wonderful district with uh, a lot of um, Tom Mains, um, Fosters, and uh, uh, Kulas uh, towers around me, uh, I will not have done the same. But it's very rare um, to find a so powerful context so that uh, you say to yourself, okay, I need absolutely to be simple to disappear in the context. Uh, it's, it's a rare opportunity, this one. But if I had find yeah. some of this opportunity, I mean, if I had um, to find a, a wonderful context, I have really the capacity to disappear. It would be also a pleasure to disappear and do something which is marvelous inside, but which is completely uh, banal, simple, and modest outside. 
that is also a goal. Which well, is I, I don't know if the students have been to the Champs Elysees, see the Citroën showroom, but I, I can recommend it because I think, in a way, mm. although that's a very striking building, rather an extraordinary uh, intervention. I can't quite explain this, but actually when you're kind of walking along the Champs-Élysées, it also looks quite natural. Mm. Uh, and I think this is, this is a very, very difficult kind of trick to pull off. Mm. To make something which is utterly iconic, which even uses the chevrons, I mean graphically, this is a very striking building, and yet somehow it manages also to look contextual. Mm. So I applaud you for that. If you haven't seen it, it's very quick to get to Paris. But okay. co coming back to the question of the context, I'm sure if you have amazing architecture around you, if you really feel the, um, the roots of the architecture which is around you, even if it's iconic architecture, you can't be iconic yourself, but creating and keeping a sort of harmony with this context. I mean, y y you can do that in a very respectful way, and at the end, create a sort of uh, harmony between two, three, four, five icons. You don't need always to have one icon and banal architecture around it. You, you can have a whole plot, a whole piece of town. If every type of building is really listen listening at the other and trying to find the same um, guidelines, th the same roots, you can also create a sort of uh, invisible harmony. Are there any more questions? So I think we're going to finish on that note. Thank you again yes. very much. Martha. Thank you very Fantastic. much. Thank you.